Good shit impacts. Rainy day is such a good mood though. You love gaming when it rains. Yeah. It's only good when you're not going out. Let me do my... Spend my resin, do my dailies. You know, the, the shebang. Available today? It is. Shit. You've been playing Hollow Knight since the beginning of the stream and you're just writing in chat? I haven't done the Ito event yet? No, I haven't. I have Tignity? Yeah. I got Tignity off of one of my standard banner wishing sessions, I think. Actually, no. Actually, no. I think I got Tignity. I lost my 50 50 to Tignity when I was wishing for Navi. I'm pretty. Actually, no. That was Chi Chi. I, I don't remember when I got him. I'm a liar. Forget me. Ignore me. Am I okay with getting game recommendations? I mean, yeah, that's fine. Be warned, there is never a guarantee that I'll play it, though. Good Chad Liveman is back. He is. Lucky. Go. Pal World was scamily when I'm not gonna play Pal World. I have thoughts about Pal World. I feel like Power World is a very icky game. I know people are enjoying Power World and everything, but game gives me an ick. I will not lie to you all. What's the T? Well, for one, uh, um, for one, I don't, I kind of don't want to give money to a game dev that is very clearly just plagiarizing off of the Pokemon franchise. It's not even like they're taking inspiration, it's just kind of clearly, it's like very clearly some sort of plagiarization. And then also, I, I don't know what it is, but like the fact that it just kind of blew up out of nowhere just kind of, it feels weird to me because literally a couple days ago, I had never heard a single word about the game. I literally never heard anything about the game Pal World. Like if you asked me more than a week ago what Pal World was, I would have been like, the hell is Pal World? And then out of nowhere, the game just immediately blows up to like the top of the steam ranks which is just weird i've literally never heard of that ever like for a lot of other games like there was a you know a slow rise to to becoming the biggest game on steam but with Power World, it's just like, it just came completely out of nowhere and then there's already allegations of, pl of plagiarization 
as well as you know the the dev being heavily in favor of using ai like it's just kind of weird to me so i'm not i'm not gonna play it i will be missing out on this trend i mean it'll probably die in like a week or two anyways but but I will be missing out on it. Have I considered playing Cookie Run Kingdom? Well, I did consider it when it was first popping off, but nowadays not anymore. That's how Lethal Company worked too. I mean, I mean, Lethal Company did have a very fast rise to fame. However, I think it was still a little more gradual than just a complete out of nowhere instant success like Power World. Like I started seeing people stream Lethal Company like slowly. Like, you know, you would see some people stream Lethal Company here and there and they were like, oh yeah, this game's kind of cool. And then you would see some Twitter post about it. And then it just blew up out of nowhere. But even then, Lethal Company still never got as big as Power World has gotten. Lethal Company did have a fan base before. And apparently the creator was an ex-Roblox developer and made some popular games before. Yeah. So it's not like they came out of absolute no absolutely nowhere. Respect me for having morals before playing a game. I mean, uh, my morals are very shaky, but I don't know. I I just feel like Powell gives me an ick. I mean, I guess it would be fun playing it with friends, but I don't know. I just don't want to. I just don't want to. What? Yeah. I mean, we already bought the tickets. It's not like it's gonna rain into. The, it's not like it's gonna rain in the theater. Oh. I don't know. Sorry, Celeste was talking about how it's still raining. Among Us. It's just preference is fine. Yeah, but some people, some people will will legitimately like have an argument with you over that kind of opinion on Twitter right now. Like people will legitimately get on you for not wanting to play Power World for legitimate concerns. You click off an Among Us stream and the first thing you hear is Among Us. <laughs> Among Us. Porter is always like that. Yeah, but I think this time it's more of like the, the gamer crowd, which is vehemently defending this game, which is weird. Because I thought, you know, I thought everyone was all about anti-plagiarism like a couple weeks ago when that Age Bomber guy video came out. Like, what happened to all that? What happened to being against plagiarism when the Age Bomber video came out? Ha <laughs> ha! 
I've done my DLAs. <clears throat> Do I think age 23 is too late for university? Your 23 and your classmates are like 18 last 19. It feels old. No. 23 is not bad for going back to college. No age. I don't think any age is bad for going back to college because you're still getting your education Thank at you the end of the day. And in any case, you could still make friends with 18 slash 19 year olds. Like, it's not like, it's not like you have, it's not like you have to limit yourself to only being friends with people of your age group. Like, you can definitely be friends, like platonic friends with, you know, 18 slash 19 year olds. Like, as long as you don't, like, catch feelings, like, if you catch feelings for some of them, then that, then there might be a little bit of a problem, but. Walton. But I'm pretty sure there are there are also you know 20 year olds in college as well. Like people in their in their 20s. I think some of them might even be in their late 30s. So you're fine. Which which reminds me. <laughs> I ever stop doing YouTube? I wonder what how how long gonna be before I have to go back to college. Also, did the event yesterday? Thank goodness I did that event before it ended. Do these later. All right. What was I studying? I didn't study. I didn't really go to. I I went to uh, community college for like a. I, f I forget which degree it was. I'm pretty sure it was like some sort of general general degree or something. I don't know what I would major in college, honestly. Because before that, the only thing I was really focused on was YouTube. I just went to college just to have a degree in case YouTube never worked out. And then I dropped out. So I made the big mistake of dropping out before having a stable career <laughs> so don't do what i did go to college get your degree all right but anyways it's time to do navia story quest yay yay my luck saved me it really did it actually saved my life that is not a lie. I did get very lucky with Genshin. All right, an obvious story quest. Let's see how this one goes. Abyss reset too. Yeah, I got to do the abyss as well, because the last time I didn't do the last abyss, which is stupid of me. Missed out on all, all those primos. Well, if it isn't my dear partners. Hi, Navia. That voice. <laughs> I didn't expect to run into you guys here today. Are you headed somewhere? Uh, just getting in our daily dose of adventuring. How about you, Navia? Are you still busy rebuilding Poisson? Uh, we've wrapped up most of the rebuilding, but there are still a few things left to take care of. Stocking up on materials, confirming construction timelines, discussing compensation terms with families affected by the disaster. Uh, uh, between all of that, I've been making a lot of trips between the court and Poisson. Hmm, wasn't the Spina de Rosula affected too? Well, though the victims have received relief payments from the court, in my opinion, as the administrators of Poisson, Spina de Rosula should take some responsibility as well. Our financial situation right now isn't the best, so all we've been doing is signing agreements for the damages to be repaid at a later date. Oh, so you're in debt is basically what you're saying. <laughs> so though just pieces of paper now, they demonstrate our commitment. They're necessary to restore the people's faith in us. Yeah, she's definitely going to be in debt for a while. Whoa. So 
spoken like a true president. You are a really responsible leader. That must be taking up most of your time, though, right? Oh, you bet. Between that and all the other errands I have to run at the court, I'm always forgetting one thing or another. So before I came over this time, I took a page from Elusa's book and decided to make a list of everything. This way, it's easy to see which tasks you haven't checked off. And then... And then, since Malus loved using shorthand, I decided to also follow his example and come up with some shorthand of my own. But after running a few errands in the city, I'm kind of struggling to even read my own handwriting anymore. <laughs> she got that messy handwriting. That does sound like you, all right. So what kind of shorthand did you use? Oh, want to take a look? Let Paimon see! Uh, wait, there's nothing here but a bunch of weird symbols. <laughs> she doesn't even... <laughs> this looks like a, a piece of kelp wrapped around a stick. And this other one, um, is it supposed to be a boar in a box? What is she writing? Hmm, uh, the first one has to do with confirming the final payment amount for the fishermen. Oh. While the second one... It's a reminder to try the new burger that just hit the market. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, Paimon can definitely see how you might forget what each of these mean. Don't let her become a doctor. She would definitely end up accidentally killing one of her patients by by because they can't recognize which <laughs> prescription they need to ask for. Uh, maybe just use standardized shorthand symbols next time. <laughs> Thank you for your advice. These are the kinds of things you only really figure out once you've tried them out yourself. I thought that as long as I understood my shorthand when I came up with it, I'd be sure to remember the symbols when I looked at them later. Unfortunately, I've definitely proven myself wrong. Yeah. Well, now you know for next time. Anyway, I should have already taken care of most of the things on the list. There are still a few symbols that I can't decipher, but I don't think they're anything too super important. Worst comes to worst, I'll just make another trip. True. Oh, so you're going to head back now? Yep, that's the plan. Oh, actually, since we talked about the reconstruction earlier, want to come with me and check out the town for yourself? You said you don't have any plans, right? So we can just catch a boat and head over. It won't take long at all. Sure. Uh, it's a bit sudden, but Pyron doesn't see why not. What do you think, Traveler? Be a pretty nice break, too. Then let's go. We'll take a boat over. Oh, you mean the Aquabus, right? Like the Clementine line? Oh, sorry. I meant our own boat. The Aquabus doesn't have a station near Poisson, so we'll use one of the Spina's boats. Wait, why did- wait, is this like a optional dialogue? Hmm. Why is it golden? Alright, follow me. I'll take you there. I wonder why it's golden there. Mm, the engineer is still doing a few routine safety checks. We can head out as soon as we get the green light. So, Paimon has always wanted to ask. The three Aquabus lines are all named after people in your family, right? Yeah, that's right. Callus and Navia are self-explanatory. Well, Clementine was the name that my mother went by. Oh, okay. Spina de Rusula was one of the main sponsors for the construction, right? If you provided the Mora to build the lines, then why isn't there even a dedicated line to Poisson? Spina de Rusula built all the lines, yet you still have to take a special boat just to go home. Paimon doesn't get it. True. Wait, Paimon kind of speaking facts. What I heard is that most of our businesses don't actually use Poisson as a hub. So there was no real reason to build a line straight to Poisson. You are right that it is a bit strange, though. If you've already committed to build three lines, why not just add a fourth? True. Yeah, that's what Paimon's saying. The Aquabus is so convenient, it's really a huge shame. Well, it is what it is. You know what my father was like. Even I often struggled to figure out what was going on in his head. She's kind of... Paimon was actually spitting facts there. First time in a while. Uh, perhaps the rest of the Spina didn't see a point to having a fourth line, maybe? <laughs> but that would only be the case if he cared about what others thought. True. My father was always really stubborn. Once he made up his mind, good luck getting him to change it. 
From what I've heard, the rights of all the other members of the Spina only went as far as giving him advice or suggestions, and no farther. That included my mother, too. Huh. Well, that explains why you weren't on the greatest of terms with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I wouldn't just let him keep getting his way. He was just... <sighs> Not very agreeable. It'd be like that. S stubborn people are interesting people to deal with. Then again, I am stubborn too, sometimes. Boss, the boat's ready. We can head out. All right, then let's head out. Pomon evolved from her little brat arc from Sumeru and became the massive brain after her detective arc. And she still got some work. She's still a little brat. It'll be a while before we get to Poisson. Let's keep talking. Hmm. Nadia, what was your mother like as a person? Uh, oh, Paimon, sorry. She totally forgot that you mentioned before that she passed away during childbirth, so you probably don't remember her at all. For example. <laughs> uh, that's all right. I've heard many stories about her from the rest of the Spina. They've always said that they were sure we would have gotten along famously. While my papa was stiff like a board, my mother was supposedly super cheerful and funny. Their complimentary personalities allowed them to make up for each other's flaws. My father would run the businesses and expand our reach, while my mother would keep the peace and make sure that everyone was happy. Their work made sure that the Spina could grow and thrive. Sounds like they were not just a well-matched couple, but fantastic business partners as well! Yeah. But those are just stories and anecdotes, after all. It's hard for me to piece together a more complete or intimate picture of her. Mm. But sometimes, I'd still look at the Clementine line and wonder, would the Spina and Poisson still be what they are today had my mother survived? Hmm, that's a good question. A silver once said that a name is a kind of inscription, a way to etch a memory into the world. When given a name, a cold, inanimate object can gain a completely new meaning. That's true. So, I will always associate the line with her in my heart. Over the past few weeks, I've also begun to appreciate how water can take in and hold our most intense feelings and memories. As well as how one may reflect on their past by watching the sea. I've lost many beloved people and memories to the sea. Even though I cannot stop for them and must continue to keep moving, the fact won't change that they existed in my life and gave me the reason and motivation to move forward. Hmm, do you miss them? Always. But no matter what, we can't change the past. True. Rest in, rest in peace to real ones. God bless. But I tell myself that I need to keep looking towards the future. Everyone, even my parents, have already overcome so many obstacles. Hope Malus and Silver are doing good in the Besides, ocean and world. I'm the president of Spina di Rosula. I've got to keep my chin up. Ah, we've reached the shore. Let's go. I'll show you the new Poisson. Cool. Navia, do you think she's doing all right? I think she'll she'll be she's doing all right. She's a trooper. Okay, Paimon supposes you're right. She's really been through a lot. It couldn't have been easy shouldering so much by herself. She's a trooper. Navia is a truly strong character. Why couldn't we have had a compassionate Paimon on Farina's quest? Good question. Okay, wait. I need to do something real quick. I need to put my clothes in the dryer. I forgot. Alright, sorry, I'm back. I had to put my clothes in the dryer. <sighs> oh, 
Boss, you're back! Traveler and Paimon, welcome back to Poisson. Oh, hey! Fancy seeing you again, Florent. Is it your turn to take care of Navia now? Twop was creating beef on Twitter. Clip this right now. What do they say? What do they say? Hey, I can totally take care of myself. For the time being, I'll go around without any attendance. We did hand over some of Malusa's old responsibilities to Florent, though. It's been really nice to have him around to help out. Thank you for the compliment, boss. As you see, I've been working closely with the boss on rebuilding Poisson. Mr. Malus was an extremely capable and respected member of the Spina. I've got some really big shoes to fill. All right, all right. There's no need to be so formal. Everyone's practically old friends by now. Were you waiting here for me? Did we manage to make any progress on the statue? Yeah, we contacted a sculptor about the job. But they can't get started on sourcing a correctly sized block without knowing the design that we want to use first. Mm. You're commissioning a statue? Ah, so... Basically, we've been meaning to commission a statue of my parents in commemoration of everything they've done for the Spina and the town of Poisson. Ooh. But since my father was known as Callous the Unfaithful for the longest Bruh. time, it would have been too controversial to commission a statue of him. But didn't we just clear his name though? Come on now. But now that his name has been cleared and the town is also being rebuilt, I thought this would be the perfect chance to actually realize this dream. The funds to build the statue were freely donated by the people of Poisson to show their appreciation for Miss Clementine and Mr. Callus and everything they did. Shouldn't Navia be featured with them too? True, why doesn't Navia get one? Me? I'm just the newbie president that's running around and causing everyone trouble. Bruh. <laughs> Maybe we can have this conversation again in a few decades. Once I've done more for the town and the people. Nah, you've already done so much for the people. Come on, you've already, you deserve one. Hey, there's no need to be so humble. Didn't you just help save the entire country? I True. Agree I also believe that Ba should have a place on the statue. Hey. That's what I'm you saying. you inflating my ego like this, I might just float off into the sky with my parasol. <laughs> just kidding. There's no way that I'd accept that kind of compliment at face value. At a minimum, I'd have to match what my father did for the people. Well, if that's what you think, I think it'll just be a matter of time. <laughs> Thanks for the vote of confidence. I just don't think I'm ready yet. Anyway, Florent, now it's up to us to confirm the final design, right? Mm-hmm. We can ask the sculptor to start looking for a good block once we've decided on the poses for Miss Clementine and Mr. Callus. But we haven't had any real discussions yet on the possible designs. I feel like I should get a few promising designs first, and then send them over to you to review. Eh, there's no need for all that. Let's decide on a design right now. Hey, you! Come over here with me. Okay. You just walked like three feet. <laughs> what, me? Modeling a few poses, of course. <laughs> here, just pretend to be callous, and I'll be Clementine. That's... um... Didn't you say on the boat that Callus and Clementine sounded like great partners? True. Well, then there's no one better to fill this role than my most valuable partner. Florent, let's grab some reference shots. You've got it, boss. I'll go get the camera. Okay. Well, what do you think? Got any ideas? Shouldn't you be running this show? Well, I've actually discussed it a bit with Florent before, but I could never come up with any fresh or original ideas. It's probably because my idea of them is already kind of set in stone. So, I want to pick your brain for a bit and see if you can come up with some new and interesting ideas. Traveler does not have model brain. I'm all good here, boss. Feel free to start posing whenever. Bro has no poses. It's, um... Why don't we strike a happy pose? Something imposing or looking out into the distance life. <laughs> he wants to do the life pose. Um, hmm. Uh, maybe a happy pose? A happy pose? You mean something like we were laughing together at a funny joke? I guess. <laughs> Why does that look so uh, weird? Would all that be able to come through with just a picture? Maybe not. Would we even be able to tell what they are supposed to be laughing about? Yeah, 
And that'd probably be a massive pain to sculpt as well. Hmm. Could one of you try striking a pose like you're talking while the other one laughs? Hmm. <laughs> it's Ether's laugh, bruh. Uh, that actually sounds pretty hard to pull off. Forget it. Let's try something else. <laughs> All right. Well, what about something imposing? Imposing, huh? Oh, I've got it. Let's try this. <laughs> okay, that's kind of cool. <laughs> I like that. That's a cool pose. <laughs> that's a nice pose over there. Wait, is this thumbnail material? This might be. Hold on. Give me a sec. That's cute. That's a cute pose right there. This pose. It makes me recall Sfina de Rasula's glorious golden age. But isn't Clementine's pose a bit too... bold and heroic? Was she really that kind of person? If we were to stick with this pose, maybe people would wonder if she was actually the real boss behind the scenes. Well, tabloids did indeed speculate as much back in the day, hmm. but the Spina pulled a few strings and made both the report and the journalist uh, disappear. What? Why is it? Wait a minute. <laughs> what? Oh, Paimon was just kidding. Please don't make Paimon disappear. <laughs> what Florent meant was that we asked the journalist to choose a new alias. Oh. You're right, though, that this may not accurately represent the image of her in our hearts. Let's try to come up with something else. All right, then what about looking into the distance? We're just doing we're just life. Ah, uh, by that... Do you mean as if we were standing on a boat and looking out at the sea? Sure, let's give that a try. <laughs> this, this one's kind of goofy. Whoa, you really remind Paimon of a captain and their first mate. Yeah, this is kind of it's kind of goofy though. Look over there, my dear Clementine. As you can see, every tree on that island is dripping with mora fruit. <laughs> mm, but there's something off with the composition. This pose makes Mr. Callus look too tall next to the lady. Oh, I see what you mean. Uh, then let's swap. Okay. I think Ether is just short. Also, why does Navia look so creepy <laughs> with the smile? Oh my god. <laughs> she looks angry for some reason. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> well, Paimon is a fan. That you like this would look fantastic on a boat. Wait, but we can't do that. Very few people would see the statue if we were to put it on a boat. This statue is meant to be placed in the town. But then, since we're putting it in the town, the whole point of the pose would be lost. Oh, okay. We'll try to think of something else. Hmm. Bruh. Is this what it's like to uh, pose for statues? We had a bunch of different ideas, but none of them felt right. Paimon's all out of brain juice now, too. I wonder how I wonder how difficult it is to like have to pose when you're doing like art. Having to choose like a pose for a statue or an art piece, I wonder how difficult it is. Oh, don't worry. We still got a lot of reference shots out of the session, and each of them can be considered to be a souvenir in their own right. Let's just keep the ideas we tried as backups. Man, if I knew I was going to do a photo shoot with the Traveler, I would have prepared a lot of outfits and props ahead of time. <laughs> oh, outfits! Ugh, oh, that's the errand I forgot back in the city. Do either of you still remember that girl? The girl I went to see with you two. Her name is Adele. Adele? Oh, Paimon remembers her. She was the one that we met while investigating Mr. Callis's case, right? Why do I not remember this? Uh, she always believes that her father, Jocks, was a good per- Oh, that woman. Yes, yeah. that's exactly who I'm talking about. So, after the case, she was finally willing to talk to me. And she told me that she wanted to join the Spina, too. I said that it's fine, but young children are not allowed to join the Spina. Oh. She will just have to wait a few years, and then we'll welcome her with open arms. Since she's still a child, though, she thought I was just trying to let her down gently. Oh. 
Oh, wait, no, never mind. Now I remember who. Now I remember who. How could I get her to believe that I meant what I said? In the end, I came up with an idea. I'd have a Spina uniform made and give it to her as a gift. But I got so busy and distracted in the city that I forgot to pick the uniform up. Uh, so I did forget something important after all. Don't worry, boss. I can send someone to pick it up right away. Nah. The matter of the we go. It's we go ourselves. We should still come up with a few more ideas for the design. I'll have to trouble you to source some for me. We could have just done that from the start. Xiao, you are not a part of this region. <laughs> uh, hey, at least this way we got some cool pictures. True. Uh, yeah, you're right. They'll have some value as souvenirs, at least. Shall wait your turn. <laughs> Navia, Florent, guess who's back? Oh, Luke Duke and Kenji. Huh? But aren't you supposed to? Oh, well, if it isn't Coulter. Back already from the Fortress of Meripede? <laughs> That's right. I finally finished serving my time. Gotta say, it turns out I was a lot tougher than I thought. After I got out, I immediately made a beeline back to Poisson. You could say that familiar briny smell became a primal call, urging me to forget everything else and just come back home. Why was he in the Fortress of Meripede in the first place? You wouldn't believe how much I've missed Melissa's grilled fish. I dreamed about it every time I had to get a welfare meal down there underneath the sea. It's good to have you back, Coulter. You look as well as ever. And this guy is... <laughs> ah, let me introduce you. This is Coulter, another of Spina di Rosula's members. He was found guilty and sentenced to the Fortress of Meripede some time ago. For what? But, looking at it now, it was probably another one of Marcel's plots while he worked at the Confrerie of Cabriere. Oh. Wait, wait, Mr. Marcel. What do you mean? He was involved in some sort of plot? Have you not heard anything at all about the water from the Primordial Sea case? Well, I know that Fontaine got flooded, but then the water levels miraculously receded. I thought that was all there was to it and didn't care to ask for any more details. Do you mean Mr. Marcel was somehow involved with all that? Wait, hold on. That just, that gave me a question I wanted, I kind of want answered. For the all the prisoners in the Fortress of Meripede, how like you remember how Nuvulet uh remember how Nuvulet like imbued all the rainwater with some sort of with some sort of power to make to like reverse the whole process of you know basically basically with the whole rainwater thing during that cutscene and made sure that all the uh all the Fontaine citizens won't get drowned. How did the people in the Fortress of Meripede get hit by the water? Did they even, like, get affected by the water? Or the rainwater at all? Or, like, how did the, how did the rainwater even get down there? That, that, that's, what I, that's what I'm asking. Oh, looks like we'll have to explain everything from the top. That case... Uh... A lot of things have happened in Poisson since then. First things first, let me introduce you to these two. They're my most trusted partners, and they've been with me through thick and thin. Now you could call them Spina di Rosula's VIP helpers. Tavat has its own laws. God damn it, you gotta use that for everything, huh? You assume it entered the water supply? Yeah, true, I guess, I guess that, that might be true. I got a low cut. Yeah, I cut my hair like a month ago. To regrow it all out again. Yeah. I'll get the locks back eventually, though. Oh, nice to meet you. I don't recall Navia ever generously complimenting anyone like that before. So you must be pretty amazing to get that from her. <laughs> yeah, we are indeed pretty amazing. But we've been cool since before we even met her. Uh, we just follow Navia's lead. Humble again, as always, I see. Even when I was totally sincere with my praise. Nice, nice. Spina di Rosula always seems to attract great people. Oh, that reminds me. Where are Malus and Silver? Aren't they always by your side? Oof. Um, about that. Um. Coulter, a lot of things happened while you were gone. 
As you can see, even Poisson isn't quite the same as how it was before you left. They lost their lives, keeping me safe during the flood. What did you say? This isn't some kind of morbid welcome home prank, right? You're just scaring me on purpose because I don't know anything about what's happened. No. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. <laughs> they weren't the only people we lost either. Many others, including Melissa, also lost their lives in the disaster. Luce and Melissa, dead. They're just gone? Luce, I was planning to give him a surprise gift once I ran into him again in town. Uh, I can't believe it. Yeah. Uh, hey, keep it together. Malus and Coulter were friends for many years, and even served on many missions together during the early days of the Spina. I can understand how he feels. Oh, let's sit down somewhere, so I can tell you everything that has happened while you were gone. Fair warning, there was a lot. I... okay. Yeah, when these things kind of happen, when these things happen, uh, I feel like it's always hard to explain to people who might not be in the know. Especially when you have to explain it to like prisoners or people who have like been away out of the country or whatever and have absolutely no idea what happened. Like imagine, like imagine a big disaster happens while someone is in prison and then they get out like a year later and they're like, uh, guys, what happened? How do you, how do you like even begin to explain it? Like, okay, actually this might be a little morbid, but like imagine during 9-11, how do you, like, how do you explain that to prisoners who got out afterwards? Who were in who were in prison before 9-11 and then got out like i don't know maybe a couple months or a year afterwards how do you even begin to explain that how the world changed do they have tvs in prisons i think i think they do i don't know i don't know if every prison does though All of this, it's unbelievable. I, I can't believe that those stories were real. It all really happened. Has the world gone mad? Hmm. Had I not personally experienced all those events, I would have also found them very difficult to accept. I think you and I both feel the same way about the profound tragedy of Melusa's loss. And the sheer depravity of Marcel's actions. I thought Mr. Marcel would always stand by the Spina. Everything he had, the Spina gave to him. It's unconscionable to have received all that, and yet still plot to kidnap and dissolve you for his insane research. The good news is that the Confrérie of Cabriere is no more. Gone with them too is the entire synth manufacturing and distribution network. <sighs> we finally closed the curtain on that long struggle. Good. Are you sure? But if Marcel wanted to rebel against us, he probably sent word in secret to Romeu. Rome who? <laughs> Rome who? <laughs> huh. Not a name I've heard before either. Florent should remember him. You see, there was once a major internal dispute regarding funding the construction of the Aquabus lines. Romeu was the leader of the faction that thought such a vast sum of mora would be better spent improving the town of Poisson. But Mr. Callus believed that an opportunity to collaborate with the Court of Fontaine and the Fontaine Research Institute was hard to come by, and would allow us to build many valuable relationships. Not only would the Aquabus be a good business investment, it would also boost our reputation among the general populace, mm. eventually paying us massive dividends down the line. Yeah. But the two couldn't come to an agreement. Romeu ended up taking a lot of people with him when he left Spino di Rosula altogether, and the split was on extremely bad terms. Mm. Ugh. And with Papa's stubbornness, I can definitely imagine how it must have gone down. And of course, 
when he was suffering the slings and arrows of outrageous injustice. Those relationships that he spent a fortune to build didn't help in the least. Yeah, you could say it was the price he paid for sticking to his beliefs. Damn. Well, that couldn't have been the first time a dispute like that happened. Oh, that's a good point. If Callus was really as stubborn as you say, then wouldn't he have argued with the rank and file all the time? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It eventually became a thing that just happened on every day that ended with Y. Yes. But Navia, uh, I mean, boss, you might not know this, but he wasn't always like that. He used to be a lot better with taking counsel. With him listening to our advice and Ms. Clementine also frequently on our side, it was pretty smooth sailing for a good many years. What happened? But on the matter of the Aquabus, even Ms. Clementine completely stood by Mr. Callus' side. Huh. I never knew. But from my perspective, Romeo's position had a lot going for it. Couldn't they have sat down and talked it out? I think the Aquabus was just the straw that broke the camel's back. Mm. On that topic, they eventually came to a rather radical conclusion. Yeah. They believed that Miss Clementine lost her ability to serve as an impartial mediator when she became pregnant with Callus's child. What? What the fuck? What? What does that even mean? So, they thought she had betrayed them? But that doesn't make any sense. Before she was their mediator, my mother was also her own person and a member of the Spina. She should have the right to take any side she wished. What the fuck does that even mean? You lose the right to- You lose, like, the ability to be impartial when you become pregnant. What? What does that even mean? That's great. I don't know. I don't know about y'all, but that- That just- That, that just speaks misog- that's, That screams misogyny to me. Sounds weird. Yeah, but to them, even taking a side was betrayal enough. They felt like their voices could no longer be heard once their sole mediator had gone over to the other side. Of course, Ms. Clementine then passed away, and Mr. Callus began to regard the completion of the Aquabus project as her final wish. With that, the last hope of reconciliation was gone. So that's what happened. Mm. From that point on, Romeu and his people cut ties with the Spina. And never gave us any kind of professional or personal courtesy ever again. Well, fuck Romeo. What the hell? Perhaps they've regarded us as enemies ever since they left. But even so, there is still no proof that they ever acted in concert with Marcel. I've also heard that they aren't in a good financial position, so they've been lying low for a while. But as long as they exist, they'll continue to be a threat. Oh, fuck Romeo. Huh. I think Coulter's got a point. Both Marcel and Romeu had my father in their sights for a very long time. Even though Marcel's faction has been dissolved, we still don't know anything about Romeu's whereabouts. If they're still trying to get revenge on us, with how distracted and vulnerable we are, now would be the best time. Good thinking, boss. We should keep an eye on them at all times. I'll let my men know right away. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that, Florent. And Coulter, thank you for telling me about this as well. Uh, don't worry, it's nothing. Do you have a moment right now? How about we go out for a walk? I've heard so many incredulous things today. I'm finding it a bit hard to calm down even now. I mean to think that I'll just never see them again. Ah, in that case, Rest in why peace. don't we go back to the court? I can pick up Adele's uniform while we're there as well. It'll save Laurent's guys a trip. Rest in you peace. Want to come with me again, you two? You don't mind, do you, Coulter? Oh, uh, uh, of course. That's fine by me. Then let's go! Paimon feels like a lot hinging on this visit. Uh, we want to see Adele cheer up. <laughs> we really are the best of partners. Come on, let's go. Yeah, fuck Romeo. Sound like, sound like dickheads. Oh, so weird. That's a weird reasoning, the hell. <laughs> Ow. I just broke my legs. Rip. Giga Chad, Silver, and Malus. Uh, 
I hope they're doing well. Mm, it's nice to walk wherever from time they to time, are. isn't it? Think of it as something like a hiking trip. Once we're there, we can stay a few days before we return. Sounds good. I haven't walked this road in a long time. You are with a child, traitor. <laughs> you had a kid? Alright. You are no longer one of us. Water. Well, we've walked far enough for now. Let's take a break. Since we're out for a walk, we shouldn't stress too much about the destination. <laughs> I've grown old, so I'm not as fit as before. Old. It's a good thing that at least my work down in the fortress was quite the workout. Well, Pima thinks you're doing great. We didn't have to slow down for you at all. Back in the days before the Aquabus lines were built, we often had to hike north with our goods, then catch a boat to the court. Malus and I must have traveled this way hundreds of times. When we were tired, we would lay down for a while on the grass, and when we were hungry, we'd catch a fish or two. Mm. The spina was still on the rise back then. Mr. Callus was generous, and everyone had the chance to strike it rich. So, of course, we all worked really hard. And now, in the blink of an eye, the Aquabus lines have been built, and this road has fallen into disuse. Mm. I don't think that's a bad thing, though. Oh, I know. I was just being a little nostalgic. Then let's stay here a bit longer. Anyone want snacks? Ooh, snack time. Oh, Sweet. Is this another chance to try some of Navia's macarons? Paimon's been dreaming of them. Macarons. <laughs> yep, I figured you wouldn't say no to a few more. Oh, uh, wait. Let me check if I have all the ingredients. Uh, Malus and Silver used to take care of tasks like this. True. Okay. The stove's looking good. And as for the ingredients, seems like we're all out of flour and sugar. The two most important ingredients of all. Should I go get some? Bro, I have like literal thousands of sugar and flour in my inventory. We're good. Oh, would you? Oh, but it would be too much to ask you to go on a trip just for those. We should contribute to making the macaron too. Don't worry, we cook out in the wild all the time, so he should have some stuff on hand. Yeah, more than plenty. Oh, that's <laughs> great. Then I'll leave the ingredient gathering to you. As long as we have some sweet flowers and wheat, I can start the baking. Then I'll go look for some boxes nearby for a makeshift table and chairs. Great. Then I'll prep the stove. Let's get to work, everyone. Having a warehouse of items has its benefits for real. Uh... How did it go? Did you find the ingredients? Yeah. <laughs> I think we have plenty. <laughs> uh, I've got a couple thousand more just in case you I'll wanted seconds. Part. Just leave the rest to me. Or thirds. Or hundreds. <laughs> Whoa, these macarons look and taste magnificent! Your cooking is as good as ever, Navia. Boss's baking skills have always been famous. Everyone in the Spina knows how exceptionally talented she is. Oh, <laughs> it's just a hobby. There's no need to praise me for it like that. I, I didn't have enough. <laughs> have you two seriously never considered joining us? You're so close to the boss, and she obviously trusts you with all her heart, so... You really want to poach me from the Adventurer's Guild, huh? <laughs> Was it that obvious? I just thought you would be a great fit, that's all. <laughs> you just happened to walk in on our little reunion. It's actually been quite a while since we last spent time together. Adventurers never stay in one place for long. The name of Spina di Rosula would just tie them down. Besides, after everything we've been through together, I'm sure our hearts would remain intertwined even if we found ourselves on opposite sides of the world. Navia's right. Even if Paimon was far beyond the horizon, she'd still remember the delicious taste of Navia's macaron. Is that all you would remember? <laughs> I understand now. 
then I am very lucky indeed to have been graced with the chance to meet the two of you. There's a chest in the background. I will endeavor to make the most of this short yet fortuitous encounter and enjoy every moment we spend together. We've got no wine with us, but let's still toast with water in celebration of this moment. Uh oh. What that? The squirrel? I thought I heard something just now. Is it some small critter? Cheers! Hey, what are you doing? Quick, join in on the toast! Cheers! May your travels go smoothly. Woo! May the spina continue to grow. And may our friendship Cheers. last until the end of time. Cheers, everyone. All set? Let's move out then. The hell was that? I asked some old acquaintances in town to make Adele's uniform. So we should be able to pick it up right away. Saw a dog in the background though. Y'all saw that? I saw a dog running in the background. Hmm. <sighs> Very suspicious activity already going on. Hello. Hey there, Ludovine. How's business lately? Ah, the demoiselle of Spina de Rosula. I must say, your generous patronage is the one thing keeping me from going bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> Nonsense. We all know what a talented businesswoman you are. No, oh, and don't forget, she's the boss now. My mistake, my mistake. I just got so used to calling Other her demoiselle. In the background, Thank you, Ilium, for the 15 months. Welcome back. Finally, furniture in the background? Yeah. That's Sless desk over there. Are you here for the uniform? Yep. I forgot to drop by earlier when I was running errands around here. Actually, look, hold on. Sorry, getting distracted, but... Look. You also got... I didn't expect Demoiselle to come and pick it up in person. It's just a uniform after all. Any of your folks could have come instead. Navia's always like to take even small things seriously. Hey, that's Wait, not hold the on. only <laughs> reason I'm here. Gotta change we mostly just needed a walk to clear our heads. There are few things more uplifting than taking the first step on a new journey. <laughs> uh, boss has got a point. Going on a trip with friends is always better than staying cooped up at home. Very well. Please, wait here while I retrieve the uniform for you. Uh, can someone remind Paimon again why Adele wants to join the Spina? <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't given me any concrete reasons. All she says is that she really looks up to me. After we cleared her father's name, she became a lot more cheerful and outgoing. It's probably because she now knows for sure that her father was never a bad person. True. She said she used to be terrified of Papa. Uh. So, as a result, she found all the rest of the Spina super scary as well. Why is there always somebody, like, sneaking up on us? But the Spina is very different now. She mustered up the courage to talk to me, and felt like I could really understand her. The two of you have contended with similar circumstances. Yeah, you could say that. By uncovering the truth about the case, I was able to give her closure at the same time. She said that she wanted to become someone like me. Someone Aww. who could lend a hand to others, instead of standing still and waiting for others to help her. Aww. From the sound of it, she'll be a wonderful addition to the Spina. I think so too. But for now, let's focus on giving her a great atmosphere to grow and thrive. What the fuck? She can commit to us once she's older, and can really make that decision for herself. Oh, that's so creepy. 
So I wasn't just hearing things. Is something up, Traveler? Follow me. Someone's telling us. Huh? Tailing? Oh, Paimon's coming. I'll go check it out, too. Coulter, please hold on to this for me. Uh, all right. Paimon saw them, too. They had it up. Bro, what the heck? Stop there were like right three there. people. There were three people telling us. Also, I love how like the running animations are so slow that the traveler can almost catch up with them. Paimon's little sparks. We knew you were going to be difficult. Seems like if we want them to talk, we're gonna need to teach them a lesson first. Brothers, there's no need to skulk in the dark anymore. Let's take them out. Ah uh hi. -huh. Hey, these guys are getting their ass beat. All right, watch this. Watch this. Boom. There goes one. He just died. He got a bullet to the face. There goes the other. Boom. Now talk. Who are you? And why were you tailing us? <laughs> they tried messy. They brought knife. They brought literal knives to a gunfight. <laughs> Are they going for the next two hours? Okay, bye bye, Carl. Have a good day. Yeah, I think they might be dead. Don't think we'll let you off easy if you keep silent. Mm. Recognize your situation and don't entertain any fantasies of escape. How did it go, boss? Are any of you hurt? <laughs> If you thought they stood any chance against us, you were sorely mistaken. Anyway, stop playing tough and start talking. There won't be any room for negotiation once the Maison Guardianage gets involved. We were looking to get vengeance on Spina de Rasula. For what? We were discovered and can't beat you in a fight. We admit it. We lost. For what? Get revenge? For Marcel? Wait. You're not Romeo's followers, are you? A Romeo's? Bruh. You actually know that name? But if you do, then surely you should understand why we hate you so much. I would advise you to calm down, buddy. Indeed. You haven't got the faintest hope of winning right now. <sighs> we were out drinking when we saw Navia. We got so angry, we decided to follow you guys and look for an opportunity to really mess up your day. So you decided to make this impulse based off of your anger from being drunk yeah great idea dude <laughs> you came so underprepared no wonder you got absolutely destroyed too bad you guys messed up ours first mm, you're lying huh you followed us all the way here there's more to this you're pretty sharp but so what we didn't do anything and now it should be pretty obvious that we can't do anything to you anyway seeing you like that just really ticked us off and we let the drink go to our heads. Listen, Callus is long dead. No matter what happened in the past, I want to be able to start things anew. I am the current president of Spina di Rosula. If your boss wants to talk with me, I'd be happy to meet with him. I won't press charges for your attack. That should also help demonstrate my sincerity. I understand. Thank you. I'll let our boss know. Uh-huh, yeah. They're not going back to the boss. But if you so much as think about pulling something like this again, I won't be so lenient next time. Understood? All right. We get it. Come on, let's go. We didn't do anything Mother, wrong. Are you sure it's okay to just let them go like that, Navia? We didn't do anything wrong that proceeds to stalk and try to attack Navia? Yeah, <laughs> it's <sighs> classic. I... I don't want to inherit my father's grudges, too. And moreover, when it comes to the Aquabus, I don't think what my father did was entirely correct, either. If the other side is willing to talk, I'm happy to open the door for a reconciliation. Opportunities for new beginnings are all around us. I support Boss's decision as well. The concept of an eye for an eye is a primitive practice that has no place in today's Spina di Rosula. True. Plus, we already know that they're strapped for cash. 
If their financial situation is that dire, they don't have what it takes to challenge us. So mm. this may be the best time to talk. Mm. I still think we should keep an eye out for Romeo's folks, though. If he decides to ignore the warning I gave his men, mm -hmm. then we could still have a fight on our hands. Yeah, those guys definitely didn't look like big fans of yours. <laughs> I'd rather things not go that far, since though we haven't talked to each other for years, once upon a time we were all a part of the Spina di Rosula family. Yep, that's how I feel as well. Anyway, now that we've sent them packing, we don't have to worry about those guys anymore. It's getting late already. So why don't we stay the night in the Fleuve Sandra? We can head back to Poisson tomorrow. I'll also ask someone to write Florent a letter and inform him of everything that happened here today so he can increase security around Poisson and be on guard against any suspicious individuals. Do we have to stay in the Fleuve Sandra again? Even the pillows there smell like seaweed. Paimon, you can't pick and choose. Stop. <laughs> Sorry, that's just what happens when you live near water and don't get much sunlight. Poisson's pretty much the same though, so I've long since gotten used to it. We can still go out in the evening for some grilled fish and drink so. Betcha there'll be people singing sea shanties too. How does that sound? Good. Huh. That does sound pretty cool. Okay, Paimon's on board now. Let's go! Paimon wants to sing too! Just mention food and she'll be alright with everything. The Spina di Rusula Uniform Gift Box. Ow. Macarons, macarons. Would anybody like some macarons? Yeah. <laughs> totally. Right on the money, Paimon. Although, of course, with the continued growth of the Spina, Papa wanted Poisson to eventually grow into a metropolis, not unlike the court. He was a very ambitious man, who rarely looked behind or beneath him. For better or worse, that always made him stand out from the crowd. And that's also why people hated him just as much as they loved him. All right. Why don't you go wait for me at the restaurant? I'll go do some prep, and I'll get someone to tidy up your room while I'm at it. You can use the same room as last time. You still remember the room number, yeah? Yep, yep. Kinda hard to forget when there are only so many rooms here, after all. Alright, Paimon. No need to take jabs. <laughs> oh, did I just hear someone taking a dig at Fluv Sandra? I'll tell my guys to stuff your pillows full of actual seaweed right now. Bro, she always, she's always making jabs at the Fluv Sandra, bro. <laughs> there is no need for that. <laughs> I was just kidding. Be on your way now. If Palma was a concert girl, do you think she'd, be, she'd keep doing mukbangs? True. I think she would. I guess I'm finally on the she'd be a food reviewer. Just say what you mean. No problem, stupid. I guess I'll say here. Oh no, I can't say here. Sit. Whenever you're Fontaine and you're sprint jumping, you always get scared because you're so used to drowning. Me too. Hello? I don't want to end up accidentally oh, falling or drowning. Navia, did something happen? Oh no, not at all. I just figured that since we don't get to enjoy nights like these very often, we should try to enjoy it to the fullest. Want to go fishing? I've got some rods and lures ready. So that's the prep you were talking about. You're welcome. Think people will try to cancel oh, Paimon? I didn't wake you or anything. Yeah, she would accidentally say something really mean, spirited, and get canceled. 
like at least five times in her career. Mm, you're good. Don't worry. You don't have to do any actual fishing if you're too tired. Just think of it as keeping me company. How does that sound? Okay, let's go. To the fishing spot. Her content would be half mukbang and half addressing the controversy. <laughs> Paimon, but I think her career would be very successful. I'm not going to lie, she would probably be very successful. Because some of those mukbang videos, have you seen the views those mukbang videos get? They literally get like millions. Like it's crazy. I've seen a mukbang video with like, I don't know, a hundred million views. Actually, was it a hundred million? I don't know if it was like a hundred million or like tens of millions, but like, it was, it's crazy. How can you call this fishing when you're using a fully automatic rod? Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. What's the problem? Lots of people in Poisson use rods like these. <laughs> Get with the times, Paimon. But, but shouldn't fishing be all about... You know, attentively watching the float, and then excitedly reeling in the catch when you finally hook something? That's old-fashioned. Am I Navia's quest? Yeah, this is Navia's quest. Well, that's one way to enjoy fishing. What do you think, Traveler? Um, I like Paimon's method. Manual all the way. Then, let's try regular rods next time. We can have a real fishing competition. Honestly, Paimon's mainly shocked at how much energy you still have at this hour. Usually by this time of night, it's a struggle for Paimon to even keep her eyes open. Huh. It might just be something that runs in my family. That's a thing? Uh. <laughs> I'm sure you'd get even sleepier if I delved more deeply into it. Anyway, I was just thinking about how grateful I am to my mother. As well as the rest of the Spina. Your mother? My father always had a lot of unrealistic expectations for me. But the more that he tried to get me to become like him, the less I wanted to listen to what he had to say. My mother never had those kinds of expectations, though. I've heard that she had only one wish for me, which was that I would have a happy and secure childhood. All the members of the Spina greatly respected her wish, so no matter what I did as a child, they were happy to humor me. Hmm. <laughs> Can you imagine? Whenever my father wanted to scold me for something I'd done, Everyone would form up into two rows and just stand silently and listen to him rant. Malus and Silver were always there, too. <laughs> no matter what Papa yelled, nobody else would say a word. Eventually, Papa must have recognized scolding me over trivial matters was pointless, because he eventually stopped getting on my case so often. <laughs> Paimon would have never guessed. <laughs> yeah, looking back on it now as an adult... I can hardly believe how patient and kind everyone was. When I was young, I often thought that I could do whatever I wanted, because there'd always be someone there to clean up after me. But once, I saw Malus come back wounded. He wouldn't tell me how he'd been injured, but I could tell it had something to do with me. I learned then that there's always a cost to making a mistake. The more you care about those around you, the more you should care about doing the right thing to the best of your abilities. True. Actually, you could apply that to real life too. Because you making mistakes can also very well affect the people around you as well. Depending on the matter of the mistake. If you... Say you say something like really mean or do something really bad... I feel like other people will can definitely get affected by it if it's bad enough to make them also feel bad or like wants or want to do something that in order to like fix your mistake like say for example you say something really mean and then somebody else finds out that they've said said that and then that friend has to then therefore uh explain why you might have said that or try to like you know explain why you said that you know 
it's it's kind of it's kind of bad if you if you make mistakes and you have people around you that could get affected by it. That's why when you're an influencer, you need to make sure you watch what you fucking say because not only does does saying the wrong thing hurt you, but it also hurts the people around you. It hurts it hurts a lot of people around you actually. Because if you do falter There'll inevitably come a time when you'll have to face the consequences. And when that time comes, those most precious to you really will throw themselves in front of you and pay the price for your mistakes. Yeah, some people will definitely like come to come to your defense. Like truly good people around you will definitely come to your defense when you do something or say something out of line and and therefore those people could also get hurt. Like, you see that all the time on, on Twitter and in social media, and even just in real life. So, it's always good to just make sure you know what you say and, and say the right thing. So, you don't end up having other people coming around to have to fix your mistakes all the time. Uh, sorry. Sorry. I shouldn't have brought that up. I wasn't planning to talk about sad things tonight. Basically, I was just saying that the nurturing atmosphere of the Spina must have been my mother's legacy, rather than my father's. And if that's the only way that I can continue to feel her love, then I'd like to pass that warmth on. Is that why you let those guys go today? Mm-hmm. Although, maybe there's a part of not wanting to repeat the mistakes of the past. I want to be reasonable, at least. Hey, look! I oh. think you've got something on the line! Oh, there must be something wrong with how I installed the mechanism. It was my first time putting one of those rods together. No. We can't let it get away. Come on, you two. Let's catch it. What, are we just going to go in the water? Y you want Paimon to help too? Oh, she doesn't like water. Uh, after some time, you finally managed to reel in the prize, the prize catch together. For the rest of the night, your rod continues to rack up catch after catch, while some, for, while for some reason Navia can't seem to hook a single fish. Navia is quite upset about her bad luck, but it's only when you begin to head back that Pama discovers the real reason to the mystery of why she didn't get a single bite. You, you didn't attach a hook to your line, <laughs> bruh? Really? Stop wasting time. The boss ain't gonna wait all day. How do you not? How do you forget to, to attach the hook, bro? That's the easiest thing to do. Or like the like the most basic thing to do. What, bro? We'll go ahead with the operation tomorrow. Do with that information as you wish. <laughs> well, your rod was missing a part too, so. I guess that makes it fair. Well, if we're just talking about the number of missing parts, sure. Oh, never Holy mind. screech. I really can't keep her eyes open anymore. <laughs> All right. Go to bed. I had a great time today. See you tomorrow, Navia. Mm-hmm. See you tomorrow. Sleep good. Ah, so how was last night? Did you get a good night's sleep? Do you think the Traveler and Paimon take showers before they go into bed, or they just sleep with all the grime and dirt and muck they got from traveling? Paimon dreamt that she danced with the sea stars! So you could say it was... stellar. Get it? Thanks for watching. Never make those jokes again, Paimon. Huh. And where did you get that from? <laughs> I didn't know you had such a great sense of humor. See? This guy gets it! <laughs> anyway, let's head out. I'll arrange for a boat to take us back to Poisson. I'm sure Adele will be happy to see you two again. Paimon hopes she'll really appreciate your gift. I hope so too. You would hope they bathe? I would hope so too, because 
that would be um quite quite uh disgusting if they didn't. Traveler becoming more hygienic with each region. Animo to blow themselves clean, Geo to control the dust away, Dendro for fragrance, and now Hydro for washing. I would hope they wash themselves, you know. We still don't know when if people actually take baths here. Adele, we're back. We brought you a gift from the court too. Whoa! Thank you so much, boss. Don't call her boss, okay, Adele? Just Miss Navia would be fine. Oh, <laughs> it's all right. I don't mind. Besides the gift, I've also got another surprise. Guess who's here? Hi. It's been a while! Hello again. Oh, it's you two. It has been a while indeed. Thank you so much for your help on Jacques' case. Mm, it's no problem. I've heard that you also helped save all of Fontaine. You're truly just like the great heroes of legend. You're really amazing. And if Miss Navia's your friend, then she must be super amazing too. <laughs> What's in this thing? Can I look? Trevor uses L'Oreal for his hair. That man's had his hair in a braid for how long? That shit's got bugs. That shit's got fucking worms. I wonder how much dirt there is. That shit is practically a lock at this point. That shit is locked up. <laughs> Go ahead. The <gasps> uniform. It's a Spina di Rosula uniform. Is it for me? But isn't it a bit big? Well, it's a gift for future you. When you first told me that you were interested in joining the Spina, I was overjoyed. But it's the Spina's responsibility to protect everyone as well. Being a member means becoming involved in all kinds of dangerous situations. And since you're still young, I don't want your mom to have to worry about your safety. So I turned you down then by telling you that you'll have to wait until you're older. But this uniform is a promise that you can join us once you're old enough to wear it. Yeah. Oh, so that's it. Well, thank you so much, Miss Navia. I'll work hard and grow up as fast as I can. <laughs> uh, but you can't really grow up faster by working hard. You've got to be patient. True. Everyone, I'm really grateful that you remembered my daughter's wish and took it seriously. Thanks to the protection of the Spina, even though her father's no longer with us, we've still felt plenty of warmth and security. Oh, it's the least we could do. As long as you live in Poisson, even if you're not an official member, you're still part of the family. Boss! What? Huh? Huh? Is something up, Laurent? I've got something urgent to report. Romeu and his folks have gathered outside Poisson and even shipped in a huge pile of explosives. What? What? Explosives? What do they want? Bro, they actually sent a pipe bomb in mail. It seems like they've been planning this for some time. We started investigating as soon as we received your letter yesterday. But Romeu and his folks must have gotten wind as well because they abandoned their former posts before we could even check on them. We investigated their tracks and found out that they're after Poisson. Have they have smartened up since we caught them red-handed at the court? Seems like they've got no interest in sitting down and talking at all. We should have gone straight to the Maison Guardianage. Sorry, I, I underestimated the situation. Well, too late now, I suppose. Florent? Where are they keeping their explosives? And what are we gonna do with the explosives? On the hill to the east of Poisson, near the Clementine Line. Wait, could that mean... They want to blow up the Clementine Line? Bruh, this is just actual terrorism. What? Certainly sounds like it. Wouldn't this literally just, like, be actual terrorism? Romeo and his followers hate the Spina, and everything to do with Callus. And the Aquabus was the source of their contention. If they manage to blow up the Aquabus Line, all that rubble will come crashing down the hill and straight into Poisson. Bro, why would they go this far to do all of that for the to the Spina di Rosula? This would literally be they, <laughs> Jesus. There's tons of innocent people in Poisson. We gotta stop them. Yeah. If they've been planning this for ages, they're definitely not going to let this opportunity slip by. 
We have to issue an evacuation order to the townspeople, and get them as far away from the entrance as possible. That should save them from the worst of it. Let's get everyone onto our ship. That should be the safest place. <sighs> My dear partner, can I leave the Clementine line to you? If the explosives do go off, not only would the people of Poisson be in danger, any aquabuses using the line would plummet to the ground. Let's stop their insanity first, then settle the score with them. I, I, I think it's fair to say that uh, Romeo is the, uh, the Romeo group is probably terrorists, right? Leave it to us, Navia. Please stay safe too. Like it's it's fi it's fair to refer to them as terrorists now, right? Let's go, you two. We've got to act fast. Miss Coralie, please take Adele to the ship. What? Watch out, boss! What the hell? This guy's a traitor! Call Terrence a fucking traitor! Bruh. What do you think you're doing, Coulter? I thought all the annoying little hindrances had left, but I still couldn't get rid of you. Uh, you mean, this was all a trick? So that you'd be left alone with me? Coulter, are you with Romeo too? Bro, this guy's a fucking traitor! Oh. Aww. I get it now. You knew about their plans all along. You only told us they were doing badly so that we'd drop our guard. Not quite. Though I share their positions on some issues, I've never cared for his more radical ideas. Well, he does have a mustache. <laughs> he does have the mustache. Oh my god, dude. Not the fucking mustache again. The fucking mustache in every single story quest. I'm never, I'm never growing out that mustache. I'm never growing out my facial hair. I'm not doing it. No. This has convinced me. I'm never growing out my mustache. And that's because out of the entire Spina di Rosula, I only hate you. Only you, Navia. You better stick close to me. But why? But why, why does, why does he hate her? Romeo promised me that he would leave Poisson alone if I could just take you out. But it was like you were glued at the hip to that pesky traveler. You never gave me a chance to make my move. Romeo has lost his patience. I didn't have to be here today, you know. But I swore that I'd kill you, even if it meant being buried with you in the rubble. Why? Only someone as clueless about the past as you would ask such a foolish question. You never saw the heyday of Spina di Rosula, nor did you ever live through the golden age of Poisson. But I... I saw it all with my own eyes, and then I had to watch it all die, little by little. And it was all because of you, Navia. Why? Clementine died because of you. Callus died because of you. Melus and Silver died because of you. And so many more dead. Everyone dead, all because of you. So the shock and grief you showed us before, that was an act too? Now you're catching on. I heard Malus was dead the moment I got out. Oh, what a dickhead. Did you know? Down there in that blasted fortress, I, I spent a long time flowers. thinking about what happened and resolving to apologize to Malus as soon as I got out. Thank you, Windfalls, for the six months. Back then, because of that aqua bus, we had a huge fallout. I was convinced that all he cared about was loyalty and that he had completely lost his capacity for critical thinking. The years passed by in a blur after that. I thought I had finally begun to understand him, and that he could help me relive the good old days again. But then he died, and it was because of you again, Navia! It's always because of you! <laughs> I once loved the Spina and Poisson more than anyone else. But what is left now of either besides death and ruin? You've single-handedly destroyed everything that was beautiful, everything I've ever loved! Don't listen to him, boss! He's just spouting nonsense! Have you ever considered that maybe the people around you don't actually care about you at all? Alright, yep. Yeah. Pat this guy's balls, rip them off, tie him up to a pole, and then burn him. Have you ever considered that maybe you only get respect because you're Callus and Clementine's child? That you've never done anything worthy? That you're just a big nothing? 
Have you ever considered that? Maybe people don't stay in Poisson because of you, but only because they have such beautiful memories of the past before you came. Because if you do falter, there'll inevitably come a time when you'll have to face the consequences. And when that time comes, those most precious to you really will throw themselves in front of you and pay the price for your mistakes. <laughs> yeah, looking back on it now as an adult, I can hardly believe how patient and kind everyone was. Yeah, fuck this guy. Is that really why they support me? Is their kindness real? Shut your mouth! I, for one, really like Miss Navia. And my mom loves her too! Yeah, you tell him, Adele. You tell him. I don't know how to explain it, but I like her. And that's that. Yeah. I'm sure Mr. Malus would be extremely disappointed in you right now. You've somehow managed to pin the blame for every mistake and tragedy in our history on the boss herself. W Get out child. Of the way, I don't want to hurt you. You're gonna have to. Boss, there's no time for this. Stop hesitating and get out of here before you get buried! Maybe you think you're being the realist by painting the history of the Spina and Poisson like this. But the love that I felt from everyone was just as real. I felt it. They've helped me get to where I am. And even now, I will continue to believe in that love. So let me show you just how much I love the Spina di Rosula! Yeah, fuck this guy. Oh, it's just... Okay, it's just Navia. Who the fuck are these guys? I love how Coulter's... Uh, <laughs> the <laughs> Coulter's name, Coulter. Person living in the past. That's funny. Lucky? So true. Check the build. She's got her signature weapon, the axe. Pretty cool. Obviously, she only gets noblesse. I, I, really, I really wish I could have gotten the axe, but... Can't have everything. Are they dead at least? I'll leave the town to you. Summon the other members and help with the evacuation of the townspeople. If you find any of Coulter's accomplices, subdue them quickly. And don't give them the chance to harm any ordinary civilians. I can't allow my partner to face the danger on the Clementine line alone. Got it, boss. I'm on it. Are you okay, Navia? Hmm. I don't know. But I have to go. Nostalgia isn't as good as he thinks it is. True. Man's just stuck. Let's hurry up there. We have to protect the Clementine line. If they're gonna blow up the waterway, they must have planted the explosives next to the support pillars. Freeze. Navia can't catch a break with trauma? She really can't. Dodge this. She is really unlucky. She might be one of the unluckiest characters in Genshin, I feel. I feel so bad for her. Have I seen the mobile game Silly Wisher? No, what is that? What about Benny? Okay, well, Benny, obviously. That's that's a given. Nobody can beat Benny in terms of being unlucky, but... I think Navia is definitely up there. In terms of being unlucky. the explosives right and this is the control mechanism uh how can we disable it um, oh, everyone's too scared to touch any of this stuff 
What even is this? What is this? Is it a keyhole? Huh? There's a strangely shaped hole here. What is it for? Is it a keyhole or an emergency switch? Oh, that certainly sounds possible. Uh, maybe one of the people we just beat up has the key. Okay, you take this side, Paimon will take the other. Let's see what we can find. Nope, this guy just had money. You ain't. Thanks. Let me turn this guy over. Oh, he's super heavy. <laughs> he could probably eat a whole Paimon just for breakfast. Bruh. Bad shaming? Bruh. Nar. Thanks for the thanks for the radish, buddy. Oh, there we go. Oh, you found it! That's amazing. Will this stop it? That should do it, right? Nice. <sighs> Navi and Florent should be able to relax now. We should still check out the perimeter just in case. Oh, you're right. They could have set explosives elsewhere too. Let's go. The fact that Navia is so unlucky and still keeps her head up high is very impressive. Yeah. She's very strong. Oh shit, we're too late. Uh oh. What the hell? Them big ass boulders. Oh god. Oh my god, he finally uses the Geo element. It's been so long since I've seen him use Geo before. What will he use this time? Is he going to use Geo? Just leave the rest to me. Watch out, Navia! You can't block them all. Block? <laughs> I'm doing this the Spina way. She's gonna blast them. Yeah! Umbrella warfare. Nice! Uh oh. <laughs> we did it! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice pose. Several metric tons of boulders versus shotgun and cannons. <laughs> I heard from Jerry her. that even they're your enemies now. They were once a part of Spina di Rusula. Do you plan to settle this privately with them? I have nothing more to say to them. Regardless of whether their hatred and anger towards me or the Spina was justified, Anyone who's willing to endanger innocent civilians is no longer sane enough to even be worth trying to talk to. Sure, they're just terrorists at this point. Please, prosecute them in accordance to the law. Spina di Rosula will not raise any objections. Sounds good. We're very appreciative of your help. Without it, the consequences would have been far worse. All right, this operation is a wrap. Take him away. We've won, Navia! We saved everyone! And you are so cool! Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, we were just in time. You look a little pale. You feeling a bit fatigued? It's probably because I expended too much elemental energy at once. I'll be fine. That's possible. Don't worry about me. Uh, but you usually glow up whenever other people compliment you. Paimon's not used to seeing you like this. Boss, we managed to catch all the infiltrators in the town. The Maison Guardianage is taking them away as well. Seems like Romeu really went all in on this mission. If he sent literally everyone he had, though, that also means we've caught them all, too. We won't have to worry about them from now on. Ah, got it. That's good, at least. <sighs> Fuck you, Coulter. Coulter. Fuck you, man. I can understand how you feel. The things that we lost, they're forever beyond our grasp now. And that makes them appear even more precious. I am not callous. 
and I will also never become him. The Spina and the Poisson that you loved are both gone, but I, I will not change how I feel about our future. I still believe that this is a great opportunity to start anew. I will spend more of what the Spina earns on the betterment of Poisson. What's more, I'd also like to propose some changes to the Aquabus routes, so that one day, the people of Poisson will enjoy the boons it brings as well. I know what you're trying to say. Mr. Callus would never have said anything like that. It's still fuck you, though. There are too many things in life that are just beyond our control. In that, we are the same. Henceforth, you are no longer a member of Spina di Rosula. But once you're discharged from the fortress again, you're welcome to pay another visit to Poisson. No, fuck this guy. Thank you, Navia. She better than me. She he, he was working with terrorists. What? She better than me. As I thought. Boss really is a kind and gentle person. She is also, I must say, a truly unlucky person. Thank you for protecting the Clementine line. I was actually really scared, you know. I mean, even the Callus line won't be getting rebuilt anytime soon. If I'd lost the Clementine line too, I wouldn't know how to live with myself. A name is a way to etch a memory onto the world. Losing the line that bears her name, that I can see every day, would be like losing my mother all over again. Mm. Seeing it still standing there, tall and proud, it makes me really happy. What happened while you were gone? Honestly, you look more upset than tired or anything. Just give her some time. It's okay, everything's fine now. I'll get you back to Poisson. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Can you give me a hand? I really don't have much strength left. Villain! I want to ask Aww. you something. And Wait. please, tell me the truth. Uh-huh. Do you really see me as your partner? Of course. Aww. Huh. That's good then. Hearing that, it brings me more relief than I can say. That's cute. That's really cute. How do you feel, Navia? Any better after taking a break? Villain, br villain blueprint. That godforsaken ugly ass mustache. It's, it's really been every single villain in these story quests having a mustache. That is crazy to me. They really have a formula, huh? <laughs> Thank God I got rid of it. True. No more mustache for me. Thank goodness I, I got rid of it as soon as I noticed the pattern. I feel quite a bit better, but I should probably still rest for a few more days. Sorry, partner. I said some weird things earlier. Uh, feel free to just ignore me. Uh, but that's because I've never heard you doubt yourself before. I used to think that I'd never doubt myself. But you could say I've discovered that I'm not as strong as I thought I was. Coulter mentioned my parents, as well as Malus and Silver. It's all thanks to them that I've made it this far in life. Do you think they ever regretted the choices they made? Has my existence made this world a better place? It made my world a better place. Don't think like that, Navia. You've already done more than enough. Yeah, you are the most fun person I could ever have. No matter what others think, we'll always support you to the end of the world. Navia, you deserve to exist. Well, since it's ended up like this, I suppose it's time for me to make a confession as well. There's something that I've been keeping from you as well, boss. Please, follow me. Everything is already prepared. What's he got? Uh, Florent... I hope you can understand that I can't deal with any more shocking revelations right now. Don't worry. This surprise will be a pleasant one. What will this one be? It's gonna be like a party or something. I hope so. 
She deserves a good party or something. Is this quest ending? Yeah, I think we're about we're about near the end of this quest. He has the mustache too? No! No, he's got the goatee though. He's got the goatee. He has a beard. It's not connecting, but he's still got a beard. Alright, let's, let's give him some room. Give him some room. Surely, surely he's, he's, he's safe, right? Oh god, uh-oh. I think he'll be safe. He's got, he's got, he does have the mustache, but he's also got a beard. I gotta go higher. So why to to you that uh, me and Ben Kabe's voice actors share the same birthday? Really? That's cool. Oh, happy belated birthday to him. The goatee reverses the mustache. Why is everyone gathered here? And what's this? This was supposed to be a gift to you from everyone in the town. We were originally planning to show it to you once it was finished, but special times call for special measures. I've never seen you look so defeated before, so I've decided to show you the designs before the final product was done. I... Uh, do I really look that bad? <laughs> that, I don't... Well, if you're ready, I'll unveil the present. Hmm. I wonder what it looks like. Ooh. Wait. Aww. Wait, that's so cute. Aww. Wait, that's actually beautiful. That's such a good design. This is. They included Navia too. Papa. Mother. And me. We designed the look for Miss Clementine based on old camera records, as well as personal recollections from members of the Spina. Wow! This is the statue you mentioned before? It is indeed. To be honest, we decided on the design a long time ago, and gave the sculptor permission to begin working. We only asked Boss to decide on a design so she wouldn't realize we had already started. How could we only have statues of Mr. Callus and Mrs. Clementine? Even though Boss is still young, we've all seen the work she's put in regarding the whole synth business and the rebuilding of Poisson. We wanted to commemorate her contributions with the statue as well. Aww. I don't know what Spina di Rosula was like in the past, but I know it's a great organization now. With Navia around, we're not worried about this place's future. We're gathered here today to tell our boss that we support you and believe in you wholeheartedly. I believe everyone is here for you, not the glory days. Aww. That's what we believe as well. That's so cute. I will also always believe in the bond between us. Thank you so much, everyone. Then I'll be brave and just accept everyone's support for what it is. This really is quite the surprise. I never thought that I'd have the chance to stand next to my mother. Not even in my wildest dreams. Aww. That's so cute. It seems like I started to question myself a bit too much. I'll pick myself up again and become a more reliable president for all of you. Looking back on it, I'm honestly embarrassed by how I acted earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Well, about the gift from the townspeople. I'm sure everyone longs for that one thing in life that seems trivial to others, but they themselves can never obtain. To me, that would be a family portrait. I've always been super jealous of other people's family photos. I've never thought I'd receive a family portrait of my own. Especially not like this. This seems like I'm not such an unlucky person after all. True. Too bad I can't stay there forever. You know what would be really nice? If they actually 
In order to make up for all the bad things that Hoyerverse has put on Sinavia's character, it would be nice if they were able to actually build the statue inside of Poisson. Like eventually in the future patches, we just see a statue in the middle somewhere. That would be nice to see. It seems like I started looking back on it. I am honestly embarrassed by how I acted earlier. About Clementine. <laughs> you know, I've thought about it before. Though my mother only wanted me to live a happy life, that's actually a tall order as well. In practice, it's just as hard to achieve my father's expectations for me. Even though my parents had very different personalities, they always had a lot of respect for each other. The Aquabus project was a monumental project that stood to benefit all of Fontaine. It would have been a little close-minded to assess or evaluate it only from the perspective of the clan. Mm. I think that's probably why she didn't step in to mediate or oppose the building of the lines. Hmm. Not to alarm me, but we have to we have to leave soon. Okay, hold on. Give me a sec. It seems like I started to question. Looking back on it, I am honestly embarrassed by how I acted earlier. About <laughs> asking, do you really see me as your partner? Oh, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! Why do you have to remind me? Please don't say that again. It's super embarrassing for me. Oh, forget it now. Please forget that I ever said anything. Oh, wait. But it'd also be bad if you were to forget it. Okay, but please keep it a secret between us from now on. Please don't ever mention it again. Okay. Alright, partner. It was nice playing your story quest. Very nice. Very nice. I think I think the ending really made the story quest, honestly. That was very nice. I'll see you next time, partner. I really do hope that they, like, erect... Erect? I really do hope that they end up uh, building the statue somewhere here that we could see in the future. Because it'd be sad to have this and then never see it again. It'd be really sad to never see that statue again. But that was a good story quest. I like that. It was a little slow at the start, but I think the ending made up for it. All right, now that I'm done with the available story quest, how would I rank them? Ooh. That's a tough one. <laughs> That's a tough one. I don't remember every story quest. I don't, I don't know how I can answer that. You know what? Maybe next stream I'll do a story quest uh, tier list. If I can remember all of them. Karina S tier? She's up there for sure. I need to remember all the other story quests though. I think Fontaine has definitely had some of the best story quests so far though. For sure. Fontaine has, to, has had some of the best ones. So they'll definitely be up in the A and S tiers. We watched the VODs? Yeah, I'm gonna have to rewatch literally every single story quest I did. I'll see. We could, we could definitely do like a tier list of every story quest that's come out so far. For sure. And now, since I'm done with all the story quests, I'm caught up! I'm caught up with the story quest at least. Now, next on the list is getting all the hangouts done. Every hangout. Every single hangout and getting every ending for them. Cause that's primo gems that I need. Oh yeah. You loved Kaves? I'll do Kaves. Maybe I'll start from the from the very bottom and work my way up. So I could do Barbara's, Noel's, and then Beto's, and yeah, go all the way up. I'm free until Cloud Retainers comes out. <laughs> until Cloud Retainers. But yeah. They give primos for the hangouts? Yeah, they do. For every uh 
I think every two endings you get Primos. But yeah. Alright. But anyways, 